Okay. Question is the next question is V C here. If you want to write it correctly, since this one is V star, every term supposed to be star. That means every term is average velocity of the mixture. You find velocity of species A, B, and S combined. Combination is done so that you get star here. So the question would be whether Vc star is equal to Vc calculated from momentum transport. Is it the same? Ideally, they're not the same, right? Because Vc calculated from momentum transport is calculated just like you have only one single component. But right now you have more than one single more than one component, so there is molecular transport inside. So these two are not the same. They're not. However, the difference is minor. The difference takes place from diffusion of the species. And if you combine the velocity that's caused from the flow that you force it to flow, and velocity that this one comes from convection, right? As if you have one single component. This one you have three components or multi component. And you treat diffusion and convection. If you compare diffusion and convection in Z direction, Convection is dominating. And no matter how, how many species you have, as long as convection is dominating, these two are approximately the same. Okay? So then you can plug Vmax 1 minus r over r squared here. All right, and from here, I'm not asking you to solve this anymore. It's too much. But I'm going to ask you the boundary condition. So how many boundary conditions do we need? Three. One with respect to Z, two with respect to R. Okay? So boundary condition, one respect to Z, two respect to R. For Z, what do you have? We know as Z equal to zero. Concentration of A supposed to be equal to concentration of dilute solution supply. This one supposed to be known number. For R, the obvious one is at the surface, what do you have? The reaction rate, right? If the reaction takes place instantaneously, the rate of reaction approaching infinite, that means Ca at the surface of catalyst approaching zero. As long as, I mean, as soon as A reach the catalyst, it will be converted to B right away. Concentration will be zero for rapid reaction. And as I shown you earlier, if the reaction is not fast, then the condition here is supposed to be changed. You need to use rate of reaction instead. Okay. What is the other boundary? Zero. What do you know? 
You can say yes, CA is finite. It may help, it may not. Because you, you never know how to solve this as long as it is finite. But you will definitely know that dCA by dr would equal to zero because concentration profile would be symmetry. Okay? Molar basis into shell balance. You have input and output. And then you can convert the flux into what you want to measure. Like if you want to convert um, momentum flux into velocity, you can use Newton's law. If you convert combined energy flux to temperature, you use Fourier law, right? In here, if you want to convert combined mass flux into what you can measure, which is concentration, then you will use Fick's law. So take this into shear balance and then convert this or this part into fixed law, you can get concentration. You integrate it, you get concentration profile. Same thing. The difficulties come from this notation. You should see that in this equation, the combined flux here is the one that you want to put into balance. However, this one is function of B. So instead of using, there's two complications in this equation. First of all, there are Na in both sides. You need to regroup Na first. Second difficulties come from NB. You need to know NB before you can rearrange Na. Okay? And there are several ways to do it. We will, we will show you by using example. All right? Now, before we dismiss the class, um, when we study momentum balance or momentum transport, our system is pure species, isothermal. When we study the energy balance, the system turns into non-isothermal because temperature change within the system. But still, we consider single component, right? When you talk about mass balance or mass transport, now our system turns to be binary or more than one species. But at this stage, we still consider it isothermal. Okay? The point is, whenever you have two species or more than two species in your system, that is always has mass transport. Do you understand the question? So people would sometimes, students may be confused. Students may say that every time you have more than one species, you should have mass transport which is not true, which is wrong. You should have mass transport whenever you have two points, at least two points in your system where concentration different. Okay? Concentration will be different only when you have more than one species, right? If you have one single species, concentration everywhere is supposed to be uniform. If you have more than one species, then there will be a chance that two different points would have different concentration. However, there will be a case where you have two species in your system, but concentration in the system are uniform. Just like air here. You have oxygen, you have nitrogen, but nitrogen concentration or oxygen concentration are equal everywhere. In that case, there will be no mass transport. Okay. So don't be confused. You're looking for difference in concentration, not number of species. However, the number of species makes the problem difficult. All right, so we finish chapter 17.
Next is chapter 18, but I don't think I'm going to start because it would require giving you examples. So let's keep chapter 18 until next time. Okay? So good luck in your examination. Don't be panicked.